During World War II, the difference between eating and starving often came down to silence. Out in the field, even the faintest wisp of smoke could give away a soldier's position, turn a camp into a target, or cost an entire unit their lives. Yet men still had to eat, and fuel was, well, pretty scarce. So how did they cook food, hot, nourishing food, without giving off a trace of smoke or smell? What we're about to dig into is one of the most ingenious, least talked about field tricks of the war, the art of smokeless cooking. Forgotten by most, mastered by the few, this technique quietly kept thousands alive. And yes, it's something you can still replicate today, right in your backyard or during a no-trace wilderness campout. The problem wasn't just hunger, it was exposure. By 1942, in theatres like the Pacific and Eastern Front, armies faced a brutal paradox. Cooking fires meant survival, but also detection. Smoke drifting above the trees was honestly an easy mark for enemy bombers or snipers. On long marches or behind enemy lines, lighting a normal fire was suicide. Soldiers, partisans, and even civilians under occupation had to rethink how they cooked. In occupied Europe, for instance, resistance fighters used what they called black cooking, methods that produced no visible smoke or scent. In the Pacific, U.S. jungle units learned similar stealth from local guides. It wasn't a single invention. It was an evolution born of desperation chemistry and observation. The secret lay in how the fire was built, not what was burned. Here's what most people miss. Smoke is a symptom of incomplete combustion. When fuel doesn't burn hot enough or lacks proper oxygen flow, the result is smoke. Tiny unburned particles floating away. So, to make a smokeless fire, you don't necessarily need special materials. You just need to control the burn completely. World War II soldiers learned to dig small, deep holes, called Dakota fire holes by American troops, designed to feed oxygen from below and burn fuel so efficiently that almost no smoke escaped. These holes were typically two connected tunnels, one vertical for the fire, and one angled as an air intake. This natural draft system made the fire hotter, cleaner, and almost invisible once a pot or canteen cup was placed on top. Units in the Pacific refined this even more by layering wet clay around the rim, sealing heat and scent inside. The result was a fire that could boil water, cook rice, or heat canned rations, all without revealing its presence even a few metres away. You can still build one today with just a knife or digging stick. Dig a hole about a foot deep and six to eight inches wide. Then a second hole about the same size at a 45 degree angle connecting to the first. Start the fire with dry twigs at the bottom of the main hole and let air flow through the tunnel. Feed it with small dry sticks only. No large logs. The burn will stay hot, clean, and nearly invisible. Materials mattered. Ash, charcoal, and field improvisations. Smoke also depended heavily on the type and dryness of the fuel. World War II field manuals emphasized stripping bark from wood using dry grass or starting with charcoal when possible. In many cases, soldiers made improvised charcoal by partially burning wood, then smothering it with soil to trap heat and finish carbonization. This blackened fuel burned cleanly later, making it ideal for stealth fires. Some Eastern Front units even carried ash boxes, simple tin containers filled with cooled ashes or sand. When the fire needed to be extinguished quickly, 
they'd smother it completely, stir the coals into ash, and then reuse that ash later to start a clean, low-signature burn. Ash was also used to absorb cooking odours and grease, making the camp harder to detect. You can adapt the same method for modern use when camping in high-risk fire zones or practising stealth survival. Build a small Dakota fire hole, use dry twigs stripped of bark, and if needed, add a thin layer of ash over the coals once the fire is established. The ash acts as a filter, letting heat through while catching smoke particles before they escape. What's remarkable is how much of this aligns with modern combustion science. Soldiers who barely knew a word of chemistry intuitively understood gasification. By restricting oxygen and trapping heat, they triggered a cleaner second-stage burn where smoke vapours were consumed instead of released. This concept even led to one of the war's oddest inventions, the wood gas stove. Some Scandinavian and German troops used portable gasifier stoves that converted wood into flammable gas, burning almost invisibly. The same principle is behind many modern rocket stoves used today by survivalists and off-grid homesteaders. You can replicate this by using a simple two-layer tin can stove, a smaller can with holes drilled around the bottom, inside a larger one with vents at the top. Feed dry twigs into it and you'll see it burns clean, steady and nearly smoke-free once hot. That's World War II science in action. Field-proven, efficient and silent. For survivalists, preppers or anyone who values practical history, this technique is gold. In disaster situations where visibility or smell could attract danger or when conserving fuel is crucial, a smokeless cook fire is one of the most valuable skills you can have. It's perfect for emergency cooking in blackout zones, stealth camping or training exercises where you want to leave no trace. Try it yourself. Next time you're out camping, instead of a big open fire, Build a small Dakota pit, feed it dry twigs, and see how clean it burns. Or construct a mini gasifier stove using scrap cans and charcoal pellets. It's quiet, efficient, and deeply connected to the ingenuity of those who fought and survived under impossible conditions. They didn't just fight, they adapted. The soldiers and civilians who mastered smokeless cooking weren't just trying to eat. They were outsmarting the odds. They understood that survival wasn't just about strength or bravery, but resourcefulness. Every trick, every quiet meal, was an act of defiance against hunger, fear and exposure. That's the lesson worth remembering. The techniques may have been born in war, but they endure in peace because they represent human resilience at its purest form, finding sustenance without giving yourself away. If you value history that teaches you something real, not just stories but survival skills forged under fire, then you're in the right place. Subscribe to Warfield Survival, share this video with a fellow history buff and keep this forgotten wisdom alive. Because the best lessons from the past aren't just meant to be remembered, they're meant to be used.